everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And this video is going to be, I've done some debugging videos before, but I'm going to do a longer form one. This is going to be my debugging masterclass, particularly focusing on strategies and how to think about debugging JavaScript. Okay, so we're going to start off on Node, and then later on we'll move on to like sort of the front end browser JavaScript. And just kind of think of like what are sort of the red flags you should look for what are the techniques to use to sort of discover what's wrong with your code because you're gonna always end up in two situations one where your code just errors so you can't even run your code and sometimes when you just don't get the output you expected your code's not doing what you think it should be doing and you just don't know why so how do we handle that okay so i have a folder i've opened up my vs code to a folder that i call debug it's empty and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create it, I'm gonna open up the terminal. And again, that's opened up to my debug folder. And I'm going to touch a debug.js, meaning I'm gonna create the file. Okay, and we see the file up here there, so we can edit it. Now what I'm gonna do in there is I'm gonna put in a console. And this console object is your best friend. When it comes to debugging, this is your tool. That's the whole new purpose of the console, okay? All console is for is helping you figure things out. Okay, really it serves no other functional purpose. Console.log, well console.log hello world. And again, all console log does is literally log something to the console. It doesn't do anything computationally. Okay, so first off, we're just gonna do that. Now let's see here. I'm gonna type in node, because again, I'm just, right now we're working in node. So if you don't have node installed, this command won't work, node version. I'm, I'm using version 15.8.0 okay but if I type in node then the file name so I'm gonna type in debu.js and notice I spelled the file name wrong okay and now let's watch what happens I get an error and notice the error now generally the error whenever you see like a, a node error let's take a look let me just make the screen a little bit bigger so you can kind of see Generally, what you want to look for is this line here, where it says like type error, reference error, error. It tells you what type of error it is, and then it tells you what went wrong. And read that. That line is going to tell you nine out of ten times what's wrong. So I know this is just a error error, which means it doesn't fall into any particular category. It says cannot find module. Now, cannot find the module is the file. So it means it cannot find the file. This is going to be because of one of a few different things. The file doesn't exist, which we know it doesn't because that's not the file I created. I created debug.js, this is debug.js. You're in the wrong folder. So take a look at the whole file path. Is this looking to open a file in the path that you expected? Because maybe it's trying to open up in a different folder because your terminal is open to the wrong folder. In this case, that this case we're in the right folder. Um, or maybe you put the right file name like you, this basically says what you expected, but you named the file wrong. Okay, so then go back and check that you name the file what you expected to name it. Uh, a fourth reason why this may happen, you might see this error, is later on when you start bringing up third party libraries, if you forget to install the library, then it's gonna have the same error. It just means it can't find the file that it's looking for, bottom line. So whenever you see module not found, investigate why is it not finding the file that it's looking for. Okay, so that's what's one error. Okay, so but if I run if I put the right file name, node debug.js, see the file runs. Okay, and again, just to kind of reiterate what console log is doing, like if say I create a variable, const x equals five plus five plus five plus five, like I know that's fifteen. Okay, I know five plus five plus five is fifteen. So I know x is gonna equal fifteen. So if I do run, but nowhere do I see 15. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Like stuff is happening in my code, uh, whether I see it or not. It's going through these lines of code and doing it. The purpose of console log is just so that way I can visibly see it in the console. So if I were to go here and say, hey, console log X, now I can see that 15 actually happened. It's the, the console log didn't make it happen. It's not necessary for it to happen. But sometimes it's easier for me to understand what's going in my code if I log things so that way I, as a human, I can read them. So, you know, because a lot of people assume that if they don't see it, it didn't happen. That's not the case. You only see it because you told it the code to show it to you. The code's just gonna do whatever you told it to do. Whatever's going on in the code, okay, 
So for example, if I were to say x equals a function, and this function returns the value of 5, okay, if I just console log x now, x is just a function, because I didn't actually use the function. But if I invoke the function, since I'm console logging the result of the function, because see that the, the function is being invoked within the console log, so essentially the return value is being passed the console log, I can see the result of the function is 5. Okay. But if I just use the function by itself, I'm going to get nothing. Because while the function is returning 5, the function is giving back 5, I never asked it to show it to me. Okay. That's different than if I did this. If I said, hey, function console.log5, and then use the function. I'm going to see 5 on the screen, but the function never gave anything back. There's no result to the function. So the point is, console.log and return are two different things. A, fun a, a function's return values all the time. You don't see it half the time because you're not console logging every function. All console logging is is just taking whatever you pass to console log and making it visible. Okay. Just because a lot of people like confuse the two, so I just thought I'd take a minute on that. Okay. Cool. Now console has a lot of other cool tools to help you, but let's first go through a few other sort of common errors. Okay. So one, let's say I do this: const cheese equals bread. Actually, I'll leave it like that. And then I want to console.log cheese. Oh. Now I run this code and I get an error. Okay, and again, we want to go kind of right here. So like this section right here is generally where you're going to get all the information you need to solve your error. This is what's called a stack trace. This can be helpful in really complicated situations, but probably not in your early days. What this is is just saying, okay, hey, the error started here, okay, so it's, it's, and then that triggered a problem here, 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 that triggered a problem here. But really, you only care where, what kicked off the problem, which is this, but that's kind of summarized up here anyways. Okay, so this is really, that's the part of the error that you really kind of, where you're going to have the information. So here it says reference error. Reference error always means like, you're a variable. There's a problem with the variable. And it's saying bread is not defined. Okay, so I'm like, wait a second, I don't remember making a variable called bread. And then I look back at my code, I see that, hey, look, I forgot to put bread in quotation marks. Okay, so without quotation marks, it's thinking that bread is a variable. I never defined the variable, so it's saying, hey, this, this variable you refer to doesn't exist. So that's one problem. I could also get the error if I missed Maybe I spelled mis I misspelled cheese, so I, there I misspelled my variable. Okay, and I say, oh, and then I'm like, wait a second, I never misspelled. Oh, looks like that doesn't look typed right. So then I try to go find where I wrote cheesy, and then go fix it, and make sure that all my variable names match. So reference errors are generally going to be to deal with variable names, meaning a variable name wasn't defined, it doesn't exist, you mistyped it. Um, read the error. Okay, and it tells you where the error is. Again, it tells you, see right here debug.js line three. That's line three. So I go to line three and take a look at it and determine what the error is. So the errors are very descriptive. Errors are your friend. Now I'm not gonna be able to go over every possible error you ever run into, but oftentimes you can Google it. So like for example, again, this is this is this is really the 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 this is the money right here. Okay, this part of the error. So I can copy that copy that open up Google Chrome and then I want to Google the error so I just type in JavaScript because I want to make sure it finds me a response in JavaScript because it's the art of like trying to find information about errors like you want to be as specific as possible so I'm gonna say JavaScript so that way it doesn't give me like similar errors in Go or C++ or some other language I'll paste the error okay and again I don't want to paste every detail about the error I'm looking for like the line that's gonna give sort of you know, the more details you give it, the more narrow your search results will be. But you don't want to give it so little, okay? And then here I can see, like, okay, I can take a look here, and I can be like, okay, see somebody else's uncaught reference error. Describe is not defined, and like just, and then this is called Stack Overflow. 
which is a website for where programmers share their problems and they answer each other's problems, this is going to be a, often a great place to kind of see what other people did and what they did wrong. Okay, and you can read the comments on the different posts. Uh, read, learning how to read Stack Overflow is an art in itself. Um, but a lot of the low-hanging fruit, if you follow the techniques we'll go through in this video, you won't necessarily have to resort to this. But as you start learning more frameworks, more libraries, the errors start getting more unique and complicated. So Stack Overflow is going to be your friend when you hit walls, especially with like different libraries where there's a lot of things going on. Um, it might start getting really complicated. That's what the problem is, because the problem might end up becoming something that's to do with the particular version you're using, um, the particular environment you're in, whether you're on like a Mac, Windows, or Linux. So sometimes you just won't be able to diagnose the error. So you have to just put the error in a Google search. Okay, but always make sure don't focus just on the solution when you discover a new error. Focus on the why it happened. Like read read these things so that way you get a vibe for like why it happened because that's going to help you in future errors to kind of <clears throat> shortcut the the process so a lot of times i may spend like an hour trying to find the exact information i need or maybe several hours trying to find the information i need to solve a really complicated error but i'll learn 10 10 or 12 things in the process that help me solve other errors later when i run into them and prevent where i would have caused errors later Cool. Okay. Now let's say I were to create a function called reverse string. So const reverse string. Okay. We're going to say we pass in a string. And then what I want to do is I want to split the string. Then I'm going to want to reverse the array that comes out of split. And then I'm going to want to. Um, join the array okay that should reverse the string so then i want to console.log the result of reverse string so just to make sure that the function works i'm going to console log the return value because i want to make sure that the function does what i think it does okay and so we're going to say i want to reverse hello okay i go here and i type type in no debug and i get undefined now, generally, if you get undefined, no, I didn't get an error. Nothing went wrong. Everything did what it thinks it was supposed to do. So here's where debugging gets a little bit trickier. But I got undefined back from my function. That generally tells me that the function did not return a value. So I'm going to go double check my function to say, hey, did I see the word return anywhere? Is there a return? Did I return anything? I meant to return this, but notice I never used the word return before it. So I'll put the word return before that. Let's see what I get. Okay, hello. Okay, that didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. I thought it was gonna be, I'm gonna split the thing, reverse it, and join it. So why didn't I get the result that I want? Now the problem here is I chained all the functions together. So it's gonna be hard for me to tell what happened each step of the way. So when you're debugging, and especially in the early days when you're getting used to, I would avoid chaining functions altogether until you get really comfortable with what the functions do. So in this case, what I'll do instead is just do each step of the way. So we're going to say const split equals st the string dot split. Okay. And then I'm going to console dot log. Okay. Um, split. And let's just start there and see if I get the result that I want. Huh putting the whole world in the array that doesn't really help me I wanted to give each letter but at least now I know it's doing that I could go do some research on the split function what I'll soon discover is that the way the split function works is that it takes a string and uses that as a divider so if I want to divide it by each letter I have to pass an empty string okay and I go and I do that and I'm like okay good that's what I wanted hello so then I want to reverse it so const reverse equals Split dot reverse. Okay, and then I'll console log that. Now technically I didn't really need to do this because reverse reverses the actual array, but <coughs> we're not gonna get into those nooks and crannies. Okay, so let me console log reverse, make sure that that did what I oh yep, that did what I wanted it to do. Okay, good. So reverse the array. And then 
I'll do const final because it's the final step. So then I'm going to do reverse dot join. Okay, and then I'm going to console log final. Okay, and I get final is undefined. Interesting. Oh no, this is um, that's fine. I get hello, but it gets, has a bunch of commas in front of it. So I'm like, where are these commas coming from? So I'd read up on the join function, and I'd learn that by default, it joins them using commas between each letter. So if I wanted to use something else, I have to pass in a string. I don't want it to use anything in between. So I'm going to pass in an empty string. And there we go. Hello. But again, still not returning a value. So then I add the last line, return final. OK, and I don't need these console logs anymore because I know it works. So I can comment out those console logs. And there we go. The function does what I want it to do. So oftentimes, breaking your function out into steps and console logging each step to make sure that each step is doing the specific thing you wanted it to do is going to be really helpful. Sometimes you have your whole function broken out into steps, but it's still triggering like an error. Okay, and you're not, it's not obvious where the error is. Um, this happens, tends to happen more when you start building APIs, okay? Because your front end will be causing, you'll have an error on the front end, and it's not, or like basically a function kind of stops and you're not kind of sure where, okay? There's a couple techniques to figure that out. So for example, one technique that I like to use is there's a function called console.count. Okay, and then here what you do is you pass in a string name. So I'm going to say reverse string. So that way I know the context of the count. And then I'll just literally copy this count after every line. So after we split, after we reverse, after the final. Okay, never do anything after the return. Because once a function returns a value, it's done. It doesn't matter. Anything you put after uh, the function returns a value doesn't happen. OK, but here we go. So now I run the function. And see, I get the label and the count next to it. So I can see that, hey, this counted four times. So if the function is not running right, I could go back here and go, OK, one, two, three, four. OK, all the counts ran. But let's say only two counts ran. I can be like one, two. So then I know that the error was on this line. Because had this line ran fine, the next count would have run. OK, so I can narrow down where in my function things are going wrong. OK, so console.count is pretty useful. OK, so console.log, console.count. Um, console has a lot of really cool stuff inside of it that's pretty useful. Now, just to show you sort of some other things that are cool about console, so I'm going to comment out all this. Other functions that there are are like things like console.table. This is going to be really used if you just want to inspect like how an object looks like. So I'm going to say, hey, this name, Alex Merced, age 35. And see, it creates a nice little table of the object. So name, age, name, Alex Merced, age 35. OK, and that, that can be really useful when um, just trying to inspect like what's inside of a particular object. So that's pretty cool. Um, especially if you're like the data, like sometimes the data is just so jumbled up that it's kind of hard to read. So that's a useful technique. Um, also, when you console log things, so let's say I did want to console log this just as an object. Console log can take multiple arguments, so giving labels is also pretty useful. So I can just say object string. I'll put a little colon there just to kind of make it pretty. And then do a comma to separate the two arguments. So I'm console logging the string, and then after it, this object, and then I get a thing like that. So see, I see object. And those little labels can help kind of clarify, because later on when you're doing debugging, across multiple files that are running at the same time, you're going to have logs in lots of different files trying to debug things. And you want to know what the, what uh, what log belongs to what. OK? 
So having these little like signals, these little like, like in Node, it doesn't give you like a line on where the console log happened, but in the browser it will, which just makes things a little bit easier. But again, these little like labels can just be very helpful. Um, later on, you might have a different issue. You might it's the issue instead might no longer be um, might no longer be that you're getting an error. The problem is maybe your code's running too slow and you're trying to figure out how to make it run faster. So if I were to comment that out and recomment all this out, and I want to see how long a function is taking to run. Okay, I can just use console, console dot, and you can see there's a lot of different functions in console. Okay, so what I want is to uh, not count group collapse and memory table time. Okay, it's time and time end. So I want to start the timer, and then we pass a label, reverse string. And then I'm going to copy this at the very end of the function. Okay. Right before the return, because then again, anything after the return doesn't happen. Um, and this time is going to be time end. And this should tell me how long this function took me to, to run. Okay. And there we see that the, rev the, st the string took about 4.6 milliseconds to run. Okay, that and then you know we can sit there and let's see here if I comment out all these console logs. If I get rid of all that, does that how much time does that save me? Okay, and see we there we narrowed it down to seven milliseconds by getting rid of all the extra logs. So which leads us to another point that when you're done debugging, c comment out your logs or remove your logs. Don't just leave them in the code because you are paying a price for every line of code, you, for every command you execute, there is a cost of time. Okay, so it gets really expensive to leave all your debugging and then plus like, it's not very professional looking. Okay, so I'll save this, let the code just clean up a little bit. Okay, so that's a really useful feature when you're trying to optimize your code and make sure that it runs a little bit faster. You can use console.time to kind of see how things run. <coughs> Now, typing isn't built into JavaScript. So there's no way to guarantee that, hey, like someone passed in a string to reverse string. They could have passed in a number, they could have passed in something else. So what you could do is do something like this. You can say, hey, if, and then you're gonna do type of stir, okay, equals, and this should be type of, so type of what it does, it, it prints the type of the variable equals string. And just to make sure, I think it's lowercase string, but oftentimes you want to just make sure. So I'm going to console.log type of stir, just to make sure that I'm grabbing the right thing. Okay. If that's the case, then we will return the reverse of the string. So we will return the string dot split with an empty string which is then we chain off of that, it gets reversed. And then we chain off of that and we join it. Okay. Now let's just see how that works so far. Okay, and we see, yeah, it is a string. So now that we've established that, what happens if it's not a string? What if I pass in a number? I would like it to throw an error. So what I can do is I can do else. And then what you do is you do console.error and you can say, this is not a string. Okay, so now if I were to pass in the number one, because it's going to come out as a, and actually just to show you, I'll keep the console log of the type. See that number one is a number, so that comes up and we get this, this is not a string. Okay, so console.error is something you can use to log an error. As you can see, it doesn't do anything all that different here in Node, but in the browser, it'll it'll actually log as like red text. So that way, um, it looks like an error. You could also just do throw. Throw also works. Throw would throw an error. So we can just say, hey, 
this is not a string. But the, like the difference between like throw, throw causes an error that will stop the code. Like the code will not run after that error gets thrown. So it's gonna be like those other errors. So if I do this and see, I get like an actual like error. So you throw this is not a string. Okay, I get like an error error. Cool, cool, which is good. It's good to build errors into your code so that way you don't accidentally use it wrong and to like do little checks on this to make sure that things are what you expect them to be. Okay. Um, okay, now of course this kind of type checking is a lot easier if you ever use something called TypeScript because TypeScript actually has types built in so you don't have to do quite this much machinations to check the types of things. And the other thing to keep track of, like when you're checking the type of these things is that if it's an object, it's always going to come out as an object. So like if I were to put, like if I were to pass an array, one, 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 one. Okay, if I scroll right above there, see I get object. So in those situations, what you want to use is instance of. Okay, so well, What you do is you do um, stir instance of, and then you're gonna do array. So you, just, you have to know what the constructor is. <clears throat> so it's arrays for arrays. Objects are always gonna be objects, unless you do a class, and then the object actually has like a specific like name. So that's another reason why it's good to do use classes, because then you can create like special names that you can check against. But see, like an array. See, that's going to come back as true because string is an instance of array. So that's how you would check it if you want to know like it's specifically an array. So these kind of checks can be a little tricky in JavaScript. Again, another reason why TypeScript is a nice thing. But doing that is, again, good to catch errors. Now, what if you don't want this error that's just stop your code? Okay, well, you use this what's called a try catch block. Okay, when you do a try catch block, <clears throat> it's like a kind of like a weird if. The way it works is that you want to try certain code. So this console log is what I want to try here. And this code will run. And assuming nothing goes wrong, this catch block will never get used. But if an error occurs within this try block of code, then this catch block will run and get past the error. So I can just console.log the error. The beauty of it is though, it won't stop your program. Like it'll log the error, the catch will handle the error, but the code will keep going on. Like it won't uh, just stop everything. Okay, so you can see here, the error happened, and see the error got console logged, because the error that I threw, this is not a string, gets passed into error when the error happened, and then this happened. So try catch blocks. Sometimes, especially when you're starting to use like third party libraries, oftentimes like you'll see all these errors that look really, really complicated um, and confusing. And they'll say something like uncaught error or unhandled exception. Oftentimes what they're telling you to do is use a try catch block. Use a try catch block to figure out what's really going on. So wrap your code in a try catch block, log the error through the catch block, and you'll probably sometimes get a much clearer message as to what is going wrong, okay? Because they're throwing, they're throwing a custom error somewhere and um, you're not catching it. Okay, so that's another like hint. Okay, so that's like generally like the basic idea of like a lot of different type of error handling. Now let's talk about the browser. So let's say I were to create, um, let me create a new file, index.html. Okay, we'll put some HTML boilerplate. Instead of making a separate JavaScript file, because for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use a script tag you can write JavaScript in between the script tag. And I will just say const cheese equals hello. So then I'm gonna open this up using live server. So I'll open this up with live server. And there's nothing on the screen. So I'm gonna open up the terminal or open up the console. And here in the console, like I never console logged anything. So how do I know that's hello. Now the nice thing about 
this particular console is that I can actually check what variables are because when the website loads, all the variables, like, it's not like just because just because I don't log it doesn't mean like it's not like Node. Once the file's read, it's done. Like the script runs, it's done. Everything kind of gets released from memory. Long as the website's up, all the variables exist. So I can actually go in here and say, hey, does the variable cheese exist? Yes. Hello. Okay. I can essentially run functions in here and interact with the website and do what I need to do. Um, as if I were just writing lines in the code. So that's actually really, really useful. Okay. Um, and the cool thing is that like, if you take a look right over here, it gives you lines where certain things are. So like if I did a console log in there, so let me go back and add a console log. What line is this or whose line is this anyways? Okay. So we see the console log. And there we go, we see index.html line 12. So I can see what file the console log is from and I can see what line created it. So that can be pretty useful as well. Um, now, let's see here, what else I can do here? Let's try that console.error thing. Console.error, hey there. And you'll see that it's a different color. So see there, we get, we get this sort of like red Errory type message. Okay, so we get that nice red look. Um, so that way you can send error messages to yourself, like something that'll work right. And that can help you figure out when something goes wrong better because you have, like, it just gives you again that error color and you can send messages to yourself. So that's pretty useful. Um, now let's, let's use the word debug. This is something that's more specific to the browser, but you can use this word debug if I remember correctly. I don't use this particular feature too much um, in the code. And then what you do, debug is not defined. Mm. Uh. I always forget how that works. But the idea is you'd be able to go to, where would you do that? Performance, well let's just record stuff. I do it here, debug. Yep, so you type in debugger there. And then this what this does, it plays, instead of like just running all the code, it starts at the beginning and then runs, and I think it looks for the word debugger. So let me actually write the word debugger. Yeah, that's it, debugger. So that way you can see like at, so I hit play or I can go skip, see, step over to the next function call. So let me see if I refresh this. Uh, let's refresh the website. Okay, debugger paused. Let's hit, so see it stops at the first word debugger. So now the code has run up to here. So if I go to the console, I see no, no whatever. I go back to, where was it? Here it is, sources. I can then go to the next one. So let's see here. Step into next function call. Step out of current function call. Okay, so then I see I go right to the next line. So now I can see the console log. No, I don't see the console log yet. Okay. Okay, there it is. There's a console log. And you can kind of like step through your code step by step to see what each thing is doing. So for example, if I was doing that whole reverse string thing and I want to see that the function was working, I could sit there and have the function happen step by step and test, test the variable step by step to make sure that like it's doing what I think it's doing. I personally don't end up using this all that often. I'm, pr I'm pretty comfortable with just using the console logs, but that can be pretty useful. Also, if you're doing API calls, this, will, this tab here will be really useful. You'll start seeing all the different requests that come in. And you'll be able to see all the details of the requests. This is a um, story for another day, but definitely something worth looking into. Like the dev tools, the Chrome dev tools in general are very useful place to look for problems. But um, yeah, I think that's a, that gives you a sort of a pretty heavy duty tour of like strategies to like fix code and find errors in code. So make use of the tools that you have available to you and you'll find that like debugging gets a lot easier over time. 
So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. If you like this video, do like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, head over to devnursery.com, join the Slack and Discord community, and I'll see you guys later on.